You recognize the movies and the actors. However, do you know who directed them? That is what you're here to find out. These are the people behind the cameras, the ones that make the magic happen. Recognise anyone? I bet you do. This is Wes Anderson. Ever heard of him? No. 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 Wes Anderson. No. Yes. Uh, he's an actor, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I have. Well, the, yeah, he directed that. Um. Wes Anderson has directed eight full-length films and has won many awards and was nominated for four Academy Awards. Lots of directors don't get the recognition they deserve. This is a graph showing what directors have won slash been nominated for an Academy Award. As you can see, the less they are known, the less Academy Awards they have. Why do you think some directors are more well-known than others? I think if you look at more mainstream cinema and bigger, so if you're a film fan, you might know a lot more directors. But if you're um, sort of a, a general member of the public going to see films, there might be some directors that really stand out more for you. And it tends to be because they maybe make more um, blockbuster type films. So the likes of Steven Spielberg, maybe to, to a lesser extent someone like Ridley Scott, um, uh, Josh. Whedon is now someone because he's made the Avengers yeah. and so people will then see these blockbuster films and maybe they'll identify with the director from that and it, it comes into their consciousness whereas because I love film and I, I love the idea of directing I'm always looking at directors across multiple different films really and genres and not just the blockbusters. I think uh some directors, well there's the whole thing about if you're an auteur or if mm. you're a meter on screen, meaning do you have a more visual style or a, a way, just yeah. something symbolic about your directing and how you go about it. it just some people remember certain directors because mm. there's just that it or that, that vision that is very clear when they do their films while there's other directors just, that just direct shots yeah. and then you've got the editor that just puts everything together in a good way while that, for me a real director is in control from start to finish and just creates a real uh, aesthetic, a real sort of style in his yeah. films one that you can say oh yeah that's that director's style I think directing a film is all about individual touches to a film and your individual style you start looking at directors such as Sergio Leone, for instance, who directed the Good, the Bad and the Ugly series with Tim Eastwood. He was a groundbreaker in a lot of ways because he changed the boundaries for, for filmmaking purely based upon the different angles that he started to use. So I think being a creative person is one thing, but then to develop your own style, your unique style, is another. I think it's really important that directors do that. With these people, you may not know their faces, but you will know their names. This is Steven Spielberg. You may have just heard about him. He is one of the most famous directors in the world. He has directed over 30 films and has been nominated for 16 Academy Awards, winning four of them. Have you heard of Steven Spielberg? Yes. 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 Yes, I have. Can you name a film he directed? Um. E.T. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Minority Report. E.T. The most famous one. Because Steven Spielberg is so famous and well known, maybe the art of being a director is not becoming lost. With the likes of Spielberg and Tarantino, the art of a director may be getting bigger with the influence that they have on their films. When you go to see a film, do you look at who directed it or do you just go to see the film? It's a mixture of both really. I think 
depending again on what sort of film, if it's a, a pure blockbuster film, then you know, I'll, I'll look at who directed it afterwards, maybe, and then that person might come to my attention, if that makes sense. But if an example I gave earlier is Steven Spielberg. If a Steven Spielberg film is coming out, I'll always want to go and see yeah. that. Uh, or if a David Fincher film is coming out, I'll always want to go and see that because I kind of, I tend to know the sort of film that I'm probably going to get. Yeah. Um, and so I'll, I'll make a point of actually wanting to go and see that. So there are a number of filmmakers where if I know that one of their films is coming, um, I get kind of excited by that and, and that's something. And that will maybe appeal to me more than it was whoever's acting. I think a lot of the times when I know who directed it, that can sort of pull me in more. However, uh, you know, word passes around about certain films or if it made certain film festivals like Cannes Film Festival, if a few films made that, you just go to yourself, all right, maybe I should watch them if it made it into Cannes. So I think, yes, Knowing a certain director made a film can reel me in, but also just if a film's, as I said, been in certain film festivals or there's a hype about the film or things like that, that can also pull you in. I go to see a film for lots of different reasons. Um, I've been in the industry for a long, long while and just because I like a particular director doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to like that particular director's film. I go to see films because A, I want to be entertained and then I start looking a little bit deeper as to why the films have been made. Um, a very good example of that is the guy that directed the um, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and that time he's got a very unique style. I don't particularly like Tim Burton, I don't particularly like his style of directing. However, his films are popular and I think he's, he makes films based upon the popularity of his yeah. style. I came across this website which named 10 underrated directors. Some of these directors were The person that directed Top Gun and True Romance, Tony Scott Casablanca, directed by Michael Curtis The Goonies and Scrooge, Richard Donner These are some really famous films that I have just mentioned, but you might not have known who directed them until they were said. Some people think that directors are too important to the audience. According to this website, film directors take all the credit for a film where there are other people who also work on the film, such as the writers, producers, cameramen and more. In this screenshot, it shows us that there can be thousands of people working on a film set. So why is it the director that gets the most attention? Or do the directors deserve all the recognition? Do you think directors are under pressure to conform to their style? I think... So a number of extents, yes, because of the way that that business is, that the film business is run. Or if you're seeing a film by a particular director, you might be expecting certain things to come out of it. But then I don't think that's always necessarily the case. So there are some directors that I've already mentioned, Steven Spielberg, David Fincher, mm -hmm. someone like Steven Spielberg. There was a, back when he made Schindler's List, no one would have imagined that the guy who made E.T. and Jaws and these very, mm -hmm family-friendly kind of films would actually make something as mature as he did. But it was then the catalyst for him to be able to make other mature films like um, uh, Amistad and Saving Private Ryan and Munich and these films. That, so it, he was able to create for himself another direction where he wasn't just known for those fun films, he was then able to make adult films as well. I think once you have a certain style as a director, yeah, people expect you to stick to that style and if you do something completely different, it might be hard to sort of, for people to accept it, um, you know. But there's certain directors that always do have a vision for a film, but they don't necessarily, I guess, stick to similar aesthetics that they've had in other films. I don't know, I think there, there maybe is a certain pressure to stick to what you're best at. Uh, for example, Coen Brothers, they do black humour. If they went and did like this just completely weird, I don't know, um, what's his name? If they did like an Alice in Wonderland film, that's very much like, um, what's his name? Tim Burton. That's it, Tim yeah. Burton. I don't think people will see that as their film, so they will be quite mm. critical. Quentin Tarantino is yeah. one of my favourite directors. Mm, um, now, I don't think he's under pressure 
per se, because his style of direction, he doesn't know how to do anything different. Mm. Um, but I think they're under pressure to produce films that are equally as good as their last big hit. That's what mm. I think they're under pressure yeah. for. Not necessarily to maintain their style, because each director is unique in their style, and that's what they make, how they make films. Many directors are known for having a specific visual style that the audience can watch the film and tell who it is directed by. One director which has a specific style is Wes Anderson, who likes to break the rule of thirds and place everything in shot in the middle. Another director who can be known for his style is Tim Burton. His style is very gothic and has got his own unique production design. By having a visual style, it makes the director stand out more. And if the audience like their visual style, it's going to make them want to see more of the director's work. Do you think having your own personal directing style is a help or a hinder? I think it maybe it doesn't necessarily mean that that person's going to have as much range. But again, it helps that the audience kind of has an expectation, knows roughly what they're going to see. Um, but also for the director, it, I would imagine it helps them a lot with the pre-production because yeah. they've done things before and they may be, be able to draw on things that they've done before. I think it's, you should definitely always have a certain style about you, uh, or at least if it's not a style that sticks throughout films, you, you, every new film you have to tackle it in a way to create a real visual style or, or it, it, it's not always just visual style it's it's all about the mise-en-scene it's a, it's just about how you put everything together you can really see the difference between just someone normally directing something and just making sure the editor puts everything together and just really thinking okay um you know should i do something about should I play with the focus of this film? Should I play with, uh, should I just do it all handheld? Who directed the Transformers? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, well, who directed the uh, Eyes Wide Shut, Stanley Kubrick, mm -hmm. you know, or 2001 Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. I think if you can become a director and people can watch your films and know without really knowing who directed it, they know who directed it. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Um, I think that's a very, very, beneficial thing um, and there's not many directors can do that and the ones that do are huge successes. For this it can tell us that the art of being a director may not be coming lost and may be becoming a bigger art form by adding a style to the storyline. And do you think the art form of being a director is becoming lost? Depends in some ways on the kind of film that's being made so if you look back at the 70s yeah. Uh, the director was probably more powerful and then when it became much more of a studio system there are a lot of directors which, who become directors for hire. Yeah. So as fun a film as The Fast and the Furious is, Justin Lin who directed some of the, the latter films of that, he's, he's not really a filmmaker where um, he's got a, what I would say a, a, a real visual style or, or you know I know what I'm going to get from a Justin Lin. So if you're talking about blockbuster films, I think the directing style is less impactful or the director is less impactful in that and you've got studios that interfere with it, you've got producers that interfere with it. But then if you look at some of the directors that have really forged a name for themselves um, or if you look at more independent film, I think the director is still very, very important to that. I don't think it's becoming lost uh, because you have directors like Tarantino yeah. who are pulling in a lot of money and, and yeah. you know he certainly does have his own unique style uh, and there's loads out there I think there's so many films as well that aren't as commercial they pass through the film festival circuit and the real film buffs know still know about them yeah. and I think that they always go for their directors they always make sure they go see the new film of a director mm -hmm. so I don't think it's dying however I think business is certainly hindering things these days it's harder for you to bring new things to the table so I think now it's more about how you tell a story well uh, that's becoming more of even more what you should be thinking of no I think there's more and more because people nowadays everyone's got a phone uh, a camera on their phone mm. and I think every single person potentially is a director because they're taking videos with their phones and pictures with their phones and they cut and edit and things like that so there's lots and lots 
lots more directors around now than there ever were and I think that's just a, a good thing for the industry purely based upon the fact that the more people use their personal gadgets and their, their tech that they've got at home enables them to get more involved in the filmmaking process if they want to. Um, so I don't think it's being lost, I think it's gaining momentum. I think this time in 10 years time there's going to be hundreds more directors all with their own unique take on things. So what will the future of directors be? Will they keep on going to become more respected and known or will they start going downhill and the art of becoming a director will become lost? I hope that directors will continue to grow and develop and maybe that way they will get the recognition that they all deserve. Hi, uh, my name is Max Joseph. Uh, I am a writer and director as well as a co-host on the MTV show Catfish and uh, I've made a lot of short films and commercials and I've made one feature film called We Are Your Friends with Zac Efron that came out in 2015. Okay. The first question, what inspired you to become a director? Um, I've known that I've wanted to be a director since I was 15. Wow. Um, in like first grade and second grade and all this stuff, I got, I started getting into like drama and mm. acting and I really liked doing those things after school or being in school plays and stuff like that. And I just loved being an actor and then, as I got older, I got really into writing as well. And and then I got and then I directed a play um, when I was pretty young, just like a fun little thing in school. I, I directed a small play, and it it uh, I was able to produce it with the the seniors of the high school. Wow! So like their plays, it was like they were little one act plays, and I directed one. And that was a really fun experience directing it because it was kind of putting together the aspects of acting along with, you know, the, the bigger picture. Why do you think some directors are more well-known than others? Um, I think some directors are more well-known than others for a lot of different reasons. I mean, some directors make a lot of commercial films like a Michael Bay type of guy who obviously does have a genius for, you know, big, complicated, expensive, visual effects, heavy um, spectacle films. Hmm. Um, I think some people are really born with that talent and they like making things that studios can put a lot of money behind, they get marketed really heavily and that get distributed all over the world um, and some people, some directors kind of make a lot of things a lot of indie films and a lot of other films and then at a certain point in the career they might become a big commercial director um, John Favreau who directed uh, the first Iron Man and now the Jungle Book, he started off very indie but now he's doing big kind of Marvel uh, comic book hero movies obviously Michael Bay Guy Ritchie, who directed Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrel, which was kind of a cult classic, and now does the Sherlock Holmes series. So, um, you know, there's those directors are very famous because they are making, they are combining their artistic voice with a very commercial enterprise, and they uh, have found a way to to express their voice inside of the Hollywood machine. Um, other directors, more auteur directors, are famous because they have a very distinct voice, point of view, um, style uh, in regards to both superficial things and thematic things. Do you think the art form of being a director um, is being lost? I don't think that the art of directing is being lost. I think it's probably more important than ever. Um, certainly in regards to Netflix and, and watching things at home versus going to the cinema. But the art of filmmaking and directing is very much alive. In fact, it's, there have never been more ways to express and there have never been more outlets for it. On the other hand, I do think that the, the art of directing a film, which involves delegating, 
you know, teamwork, mm. having a producer, a director, a, a cinematographer, a screenwriter, actors, um, a production designer, a makeup person. Like, that to me is what directing is. It's literally you are the director and there are all these people around you and you are tell you are directing them. You are giving them a direction yeah. so that you can achieve something greater than anything you could each do individually. Mm. Art of directing is different and I I fear that maybe the art of directing is now going to be seen or considered an older an older craft because it seems like the younger generation is much more interested in the in doing it all themselves which is cool mm-hmm. but different yes yeah I suppose they should do really because I do have the main probably the main part of the field yes I think they do lesser directors the famous ones get lots but the lesser ones need more so, now I'm watching a film, will you take into account who directed it? And will you go to cinema just to see a film directed by a certain director? Or do you simply want to go and see the film and just be entertained? Either way, I hope this documentary is showing you how important directors are and how much recognition they actually need. And cut! <laughs>